Hey, everybody, it's Congressman Jamie Raskin. Um, I'm shouting out to all my friends in Maryland's beautiful 8th Congressional District uh, and beyond in Maryland and across the country. Uh, to all the people following us, uh, I'm here for my favorite time of the week, Local Hero, when we get to salute and interact with the people who make Maryland's 8th District such an extraordinary place to live and work and visit. Um, and this is Hispanic Heritage Month, or almost anyway, September 15th to October 15th. And uh, we're going to launch it um, here on Local Hero um, with uh, a, a true local hero, uh, my friend Jose Antonio Tiarino. Um, Antonio is the president and CEO of the Hispanic Heritage Foundation, which launched the uh, Hispanic uh, Heritage Awards. I think they just recorded that at the Kennedy Center. It'll be coming out uh, soon. This is the national not-for-profit organization which is focused on education, workforce, social impact, culture, uplift, leadership um, within the Hispanic community. And the guy who's at the center of all of it is Antonio Tiarino. So, but Antonio, I just want to thank you for being a great national leader and a great local leader uh, and a great uh, Montgomery County community citizen. I know um, you live with your family, your three kids uh, in Bethesda. Your kids have gone to BCC and Westland, and you've been a, a great local citizen as well as a leader of this really important nationwide organization. So let me start by congratulating you on being a local hero and saluting you uh, on the Hispanic Heritage Awards and um, on your leadership of uh, the Hispanic Heritage Foundation. There is no greater feeling, Congressman, than having you represent our district locally, nationally, and internationally on Capitol Hill. And I just can't tell you how much pride I get every time I see you up there tirando golpes on behalf of democracy and on behalf of everyone in your district, this country, and the world. I just appreciate you. Um, but I, I'm thrilled to be on here. I. I, I, I'm a national leader, but I'm a local leader, too. So I'm proud to sit on the board of the Kid Museum. I was on Imagination Stage, Crittenden Services. I work at, at the board of the um, uh, of the University Systems of Maryland Foundation, very involved with Mary Center and all these different groups. It's a privilege to live in your district. And I just try to do my little part uh, to make it a little better. But you do a whole lot to make well, it a whole hey, lot better. Thank you for your kind words. But... Um, especially thank you for your extraordinary leadership and involvement. I mean, everywhere I turn, whether it's uh, the University System of Maryland for all of our higher education institutions or Imagination Stage, um, Kids Museum, I think I saw you over there recently for <laughs> a, a great event. Um, tell me what, you know, what Maryland has meant to you. You went to the University of Maryland you're you're an immigrant from Nicaragua, right? You came over as a kid. Um, but tell us what role Maryland's played in your life and your education and development. Going to University of Maryland was a huge deal for me. From the time I was a kid, I always wanted to go there. And I'm an immigrant from Nicaragua. And it, I want to represent the value proposition that all immigrants bring to this great country. And I know you understand that from the way our district has been lifted by immigrant communities that that I see and by council members that play such an important role here locally, like Gabe Albornoz and Nancy Navarro did. And, and my council member for my area here in Bethesda is, is a great friend and a, and a, and a terrific um, advocate for the Latino and immigrant communities. Uh, but going to University of Maryland, I'm Tony Terrapin. I take a lot of pride in it. And um, I've also been able to build a network I mean, social capital is so important. And I've always said your relevance is who you can call and who you get a call from in order to have action. And I've been able to do that here in, in the great state of Maryland um, that then radiates across the country and beyond into Latin America through my work. But it all starts here. I worked at Chesapeake Seafood House while I was going to Maryland. Uh, I have been able, I have, I'm imbued in the community here from the time that I was a young man and now to see my children growing up in this state and knowing that sense of responsibility that they have as children of an immigrant, uh, I think is very powerful to see it as they're volunteering. I, I, I take, took my daughter and a 
her friends from BCC to the border to work in support of the migrant communities that end up here in, in, in our district. Um, and what does that mean in terms of building that empathy, building that sense of responsibility, uh, building that sense of value that we can get from our immigrant community? So I'm very proud to be an immigrant and very proud to have landed here in Maryland. We live um, in a community, we're fortunate to live in a community which really does embrace remarkable mm. diversity. And we've had people from all over the world come into Montgomery County. We're one of the most diverse places in the entire country. And the diversity works, people celebrate it, people exult in it, uh, people rejoice in it. And yet at the same time, we're often treated to a national political discourse, which is still demonizing and vilifying people uh, who are immigrants to the country. And I wonder if you would reflect for a moment on the role that like your Hispanic Heritage Awards play, uplifting and celebrating culture, the role that that plays in terms of transforming a situation which can be so hostile. You know, Congressman, the big thing is that we need to tell those stories. When somebody else tells your stories, I don't care where you're from or who you are, it's not good. It needs to be told by your own community and defined um, in a very interesting way because we actually look like everyone, everyone looks like us. We have a little bit of everything in our community. And that is the richness of our community, the complexities, the intersections. I think the identity part of it is where it's really important. But when you're being defined and that narrative is for some political purpose, and demonizes your community and scapegoats your community. That's where I think telling those stories that that represent that value proposition that we offer, the vision that we have, the great promise of youth, one out of three Latinos is under 18 years old. Right now, I think it's 28% of the entire population of the United States school population is Latino. And the 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 the, the most popular age. For, the, for everyone else is about 55, for the Latino community is 14. Wow. So our district, our state, our country is dependent on the Latino community. And you have a flat population right now. That's not good for the economy. That's not, look what's happening in other places, in other countries. We're dependent on our migrant communities. Um, so I think we need to present the migrant community, the Latino community, um, as a valuable ne ne uh, necessity to be able to build our country and to have that economic growth. And our, our job is just to make sure that we're telling those stories and also providing those platforms. We teach 100,000 kids how to computer code all over the country, including here in Montgomery County. We are able to, we have a Minecraft game that's a Latino themed Minecraft game that was played by 30 million kids in 30 different countries yeah. that present that value proposition. And we're even doing skills building all over the country for people to get better jobs and pivot even as they're advanced in their careers. So there's a whole lot more than just telling those stories because we actually need to put ourselves in a position to tell those stories uh, by being on those pathways and, and being able to take, take that opportunity that America offers all of us. So, right. It, you know, when I go out and do events uh, in the Hispanic community, whether it's chess or soccer or dance or whatever, I'm just overwhelmed by the youthful vibrancy and the vitality of the community. It seems that generally among young people in America, whether we're talking about Hispanic kids or African-American kids or white kids or Asian-American kids, whatever it is, that they really um, have gotten beyond a lot of the hangups that oh, yeah. we grew up with. They're not hung up on racism and anti-Semitism and homophobia and all that stuff. They really see people for who they are. And so much of the struggle we're seeing in America today really is a generational struggle, whether we can let this new generation come forward and do all the kinds of wonderful things you're, you're talking about. And I, I wonder to what extent um, you feel like you're really seeing like dramatic changes in the young people across the board. I'd rather bet on a 16 year old than a 60 year old. So let me make that clear. And I also understand this Congressman that a 15 year old with access to Wi-Fi and a device can reach more people in a split second than Martin Luther King, Gandhi, 
and Cesar Chavez could in their iconic lifetimes combined. So that is a starting point in terms of the capability. We just have to match that with the opportunity and with confidence and also building social capital. So they are able to work together in order to move our, our country, our workforce together um, and have a social impact and also represent us on Capitol Hill. Um, so I, I'm very optimistic whenever you talk about youth and I'm around so much youth that we have a network of 300,000 15 to 40 year olds. So I can't be anything but optimistic, but let's not lose sight of what it's like outside of your district. <laughs> uh, you, you can't judge the rest of the, the, the population like, like you want to judge um, our, our district, which is uh, uh, remarkable in terms of the, the, um, uh, the openness, uh, the, the embracing of, of all of our diversity. I, I challenge anyone that, is, that has a problem with our diversity to go to Silver Spring on a Sunday afternoon and not want to eat and dance and have a great conversation with people that are here from Africa and Asia and Europe and, and, and Latin America and, and other parts of the United States. It is the most beautiful moment that you can have to go to Silver Spring on a Sunday afternoon. And I've seen you there, too. And oh, I yeah. think you are eating and dancing. <laughs> I mean, I, I look, that's one of my favorite things in the world, too. It, it's just such an extraordinary profusion of uh, people and culture and interaction from all over the world. It's very exciting. You know, I want to thank you, Antonio, for embodying so much the values of our community and what you're doing to promote a, a strong and diverse and open and inclusive democratic America. And um, we salute you for your leadership in your family, in your community, in your state, in your country. So thank you for being our local hero.